What does it take to be an entrepreneur? When you wake up early in the morning thinking about, you know, your vision that you have. Whenever you choose to set up any form of business, you have to be passionate about you it. You literally want something to be successful. To be successful in entrepreneurship. Realize they needed to go to school to learn the profession. Meet the brains behind the business. Wait for that money to come and you must have a budget. And uh, one of the mistakes that when they try to be entrepreneurs is they jump into it a little bit too early. If I don't know, then I know a lot of people don't know. Mind your own business. This program provides the platform for budding entrepreneurs to initialize, educate, and develop ideas emerging into the global stage of the economy. Stay tuned on this station for Mind Your Own Business, brought to you by UBA, Africa's global bank. Are you a budding entrepreneur or in pursuit to start your own business? Mind Your Own Business provides great tips and sheds more light on the success stories of some established entrepreneurs. Mind Your Own Business is also giving away 100,000 naira weekly to two lucky winners plus entry for the grand prize draw of 500,000 naira. But first, to be part of this, you have to open and fund an existing UBA Lion Prime Basic account with 20,000 naira or more. Stay tuned for weekly questions coming your way and remember to send your name, location and correct answers via our Twitter handle at MYOBizNigeria with the hashtag MYOBizNigeria. Mind Your Own Business is brought to you by UBA, Africa's global bank. This is Mind Your Own Business brought to you by UBA, Africa's global bank. Good morning and welcome to Mind Your Own Business brought to you by UBA, Africa's Global Bank. I am Wale Famrewa and it's a delight to bring you the stories of entrepreneurs in Nigeria. And today we have a very, very special guest, if I can say so myself. It's not every day you get to hear from a visually impaired person, but that hasn't stopped him from emerging as one of the leading music producers and songwriters of his generation. So we actually have a great opportunity to hear about his talent, but also about Nigeria's really really exploding music industry my guest today is kobams azukor is the ceo and head of productions at camp that's kobam azukor music productions kobams it's a pleasure to have you here thank you so much wally i'm glad to be here all right so let's get right into it and take us back where did it all start for you in terms of your journey as a musician a songwriter and then of course as an entrepreneur I think it started for me as a six-year-old kid growing up in the barracks, puffing my cheeks to play the 12-bar blues. Um, mm. I always wanted to make music, but I didn't have access to the kind of instruments I, I could make music with. So I made music with everything around me from, you know, I would I would drum on my body. I would, um, I would play the drums on my body and I would, you know, puff my cheeks. Like I said, I would lock myself up in the bathroom and whistle because mm. I liked the reverberating effect. Mm. Um, it progressed from then, from there on to me... Um, playing music in you know the the block I lived, I would come out and make music, like literally just do a concert and have people come out, you know, from my block to be part of that concert. Oh, so, okay. it, 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 I think it started from there, and then I just started to make up songs, and you know, the songs would kind of travel around, you know, the barracks where I lived at that time. Okay, and then I started to play for my church. I started okay. playing small time jazz when I turned fourteen. It just progressed from there on, and then I, you know. To sleeping at studios um, and dreaming of owning one myself, and mm. you know, here we are. Mm. So you've always had that feeling that you were talented, and you got right into it. But at what point would you say you crossed over into being a businessman in the music industry? Um, I think for me, um, I crossed over when I realized that. Um, no matter how much talent you have um, to be able to sustain your passion mm. um, at some point you know it needs to translate into a business mm -hmm. um, I made music because I enjoyed music and I made music for any I mean if if you if, if you could take me to a good studio I would make music for you know, just that reason you mm. know, if you bought me a snack while I was working at sitting there and make extra music for mm. you so but at the point thing, I, yeah, it was just my thing but at the point I realized that it was not you know sustainable and that you know in order to keep it going and in order to you know make it count you know, I had to get people to pay for my services as a musician I think okay. I began to see like a certain kind of value in you know the value that I was bringing to people you okay. know with the music that I was creating can you take us back to maybe your first should I say music business deal what's, what's your memory of that um, my first where you actually made money from music where I actually made money like made real money or just 
any money I, I guess we start from somewhere right okay yes we we of course um my first ever music deal i had um co-produced an album for a church okay and um i was just working on the album with uh, my uh, music instructor from primary school and i was really excited about the project and when we got done and i was going to go home i think he paid me three thousand naira or something like mm. that i was so excited i didn't believe mm. i must have spent i must have spent all the money <laughs> if i left his house <laughs> i was i was super excited right. i was yeah but that told you that it was possible. Yeah, it told it. me that it was possible and that, you know, I could actually turn this talent into a business. So how far has it come? Tell us about what Camp is, is doing now. Well, Camp is doing a lot. Uh, uh, w- w- essentially, we discover and nurture and develop artists. We've been able to do that over the last um, couple of years. We've been able to do that um, since 2008, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, we've put out a number of albums um, we've developed a number of artists. Uh, noteworthy is Bez, of course, who mm. um, uh, we're about to put out his second album, and we're really excited about oh, great that. Talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, we've gotten you know he's gotten mentioned from Boston Globe, you know Rolling Stone, I mean, a couple other, I mean just you know notable you know media points. So we're we're excited about that, and um, we're expanding. And um, trying to do more in terms of creating content outside of just music. So okay. I think um, it's come it's come a long way. All right, and you know the thing about talent is that it's something you have. It's it's God given. It's something you like you mentioned you can even do for free. Mm. But to really take it to the next level, and when you speak to athletes, musicians, they will always tell you about the discipline. So maybe you can speak to the discipline of developing and nurturing that talent. Yeah, I, th- I think one of the things that you, st- you would struggle with as a creative person is actually building and maintaining discipline. Mm. But the honest truth is that, for me, is the difference between you know successful creative people and creative people who struggle. Mm. Um, it, for creative people who struggle, it is not you know the not knowing how to do it; it's the actual getting up to do it. Mm. And getting up to do it requires discipline. You know, it requires discipline to get up in the morning. You know, you'd rather not. As mm-hmm. a creative person, you live in your own little bubble. Mm. You know what I mean? But when you don't do it, um, you're just a dreamer. And, you know, those dreams can't come, you know, to fruition, to reality if Mm. you don't put the work, you know, the commensurate, you know, measure of work behind it. So um, it's important. It's extremely important. It cannot be overemphasized. They need Mm. to build this. I mean, for instance... I spent my nights, you know, as a, as a, as a young man, just working in studios, working, mm. just making music, you know, under extreme conditions sometimes. <laughs> yes, okay. but we made music, you know, I'd, I'd get into a taxi and fall asleep because I had worked all night, you mm. know, mm. you know, you were fueling on coffee, you, because you just believed you had to put in the work because mm-hmm. nobody really mm-hmm. knows what's mm-hmm. in your head mm-hmm. you know the the discipline to put in the work is what interprets what is what is in your head to that space that people can actually uh, appreciate you know and value you know your thoughts so right. i I, th- I think discipline cannot be overemphasized all right corbans will have to take a break now but before we do that as usual we like our guests to make a music selection so what would it be oh wow um, so I've I've been listening to this amazing album by an amazing artist. I I in my opinion I think she's uh, sort of underrated in this space, mm. and um, I would like to share it with any, anyone who cares to listen. It's uh, it's from an album titled "And the Bass Is Queen" by mm. Lindsay Abide, and um, the song I would pick from the album I think is titled "Home Free." I hope I got that title correctly. Right. Well, I'm sure our producers can put that together for you. All right. We'll come back after this break and give you more perspective on Nigeria's entertainment and music industry with Kobam Zazuko. We're back in a moment. Coming up on Mind Your Own Business. Making money is great um, when you turn your talent into, you know, money-making venture. That's great. But what's even more important is, you know, being able to sustain your inflow and being able to take your inflow, turn it around and invest and grow the business. Fires that 
Listening to Mind Your Own Business brought to you by UBA, Africa's Global Bank. Are you a budding entrepreneur or in pursuit to start your own business? Mind Your Own Business provides great tips and sheds more light on the success stories of some established entrepreneurs. Mind Your Own Business is also giving away 100,000 naira weekly to two lucky winners, plus entry for the grand prize draw of 500,000 naira. But first, to be part of this, you have to open and fund an existing UBA Lion Prime Basic account with 20,000 naira or more. Stay tuned for weekly questions coming your way and remember to send your name, location and correct answers via our Twitter handle at MYOBizNigeria with the hashtag MYOBizNigeria. Mind Your Own Business is brought to you by UBA, Africa's global bank. Welcome back to Mind Your Own Business, brought to you by UBA, Africa's Global Bank. We're speaking to Kobams Azukwa, the CEO and head of productions at Camp. That is, of course, Kobam Azukwa Music Productions. Kobams, thank you so much for staying with us today. Thank you. All right, let's explore more about what Camp is into now. Um, you've talked about its evolution a little bit. You've given us some insight into what you do. But, you know, as your business evolves, I imagine the, the business is also changing. So, can you just speak to what you're doing differently now? Camp is in a very um, pivotal point in its existence. As a matter of fact, it's it's so crucial and um, the change so uh, important and so uh, you know apparent that um, it you, it might even in the process you know lose you know its its current name. Um, mm. Not not the idea or what it stands for, but it's it's just moving because camp for me when it started uh, was driven solely by passion. Mm. Um, I'd come out of school, I'd you know, made a bit of money, and I felt that you know the natural thing to do, you know, if, if you to follow a natural trajectory is to start a business. But um, what happened was we started to run a business that was more out of passion than it was based on proper business structure and principles. Right. And so what happens is you exercise your talents, which is what you know how to do. Okay. You get lucky and you make a ton of money, but um, you, you don't have the, the structure and the processes to um, sustain the business and in some cases even sustain the money that you make. But can you speak a to very, some, very dangerous place to be. But can you speak to some of those pitfalls just to educate our, some of our listeners who are getting into this industry what do you think they need to learn? So, for instance, I would I, I would advise any anyone who's you know thinking about turning their 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 talent into a business. One of the things you want to do is you have to come up with a business plan. It's either something you're able to do yourself mm -hmm. or if you don't have the gift for it. And it's okay if you don't, you know, find people who are just, you know, who are versed in helping to build structures and build processes. You mm -hmm. cannot run a business no matter how talented you are if you don't have structures and processes in place. I, I think this is something, you know, camp sort of became more like a learning curve for us where, you know, we've now graduated into this space where we're now trying to put, you know, the proper structures and all of because at the end of the day you're trying to build a sustainable business and if your business is built based on your talent alone your talent is oftentimes tied to your time and your if your business is tied to your time it means when you're not there um, your business cannot progress it cannot sustain itself without you and in order to build you know business business that is enduring it has to be self-sustaining mm. and in order for that to happen it has to get to a point where the knowledge and everything that you have you know is 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 passed on and in order for that to happen there's got to be processes mm -hmm. i mean that's what happens with all the big businesses you right. know, anywhere else in the world so i think th that's one thing i would speak to that you know people need to ensure that they have proper processes and structures 
structures and also the discipline to enforce them when you mm-hmm. build these processes and these structures. You need to enforce them. Um, making money is great um, when you turn your talent into you know money making venture. That's great. But what's even more important is you know being able to sustain your inflow and being able to take your inflow, turn it around, and invest and grow the business. So I think you know these are some of the things you want to think about. If not, it becomes a paycheck to paycheck business and that's dangerous because you know it's it, it's it's a pack of dominoes you just need to pull one out and everything literally comes right. you know, down to the ground right. and as soon as you recognize that you're in a place where you know you're you're not operating based on you know proper standard business structures you know go ahead and you know do do the wise thing get people involved and you know get your books and everything in order it mm. just you know mm. it saves you it saves you the trouble because the, the longer you wait to do it, you know, the more messy things become, you know, business wise. So, right. yeah, I think I'd speak to two things, structure yeah. and process right. and discipline. OK, so I want you to speak to maybe that person out there who is listening and thinks he's talented at anything. And maybe he's just in his room thinking, how do I make this talent work for me? And you've obviously been there at some point mm. and. I want you to speak to that person. What, what do you think should be the next moves, the next deliberate moves to turn that talent into profit? I, I would say one of the first thing, one of the first things you have to do is value your talent. A lot of talented people oftentimes don't value their talent, and um, valuing or not valuing your talent has nothing to do with how well you do what you do. It has everything to do with the premium you place on what you do. All right. And until you can place that premium on what you do, you may not be able to price it properly. And so if you can't price it properly, then you can't demand, you know, your due um, from your clients. So I think one of the first things you want to do is value your talent. Now, after you value your talent, you need but, to... Rep- but how, how do you value your talent? I'm just trying to understand what that means for uh, in in practical terms for someone who thinks for instance that can sing or can produce music how does he value his or her talent I think a lot of honesty is involved I think quite a bit of research is also involved Mm -hmm. Um, first of all we need to be sure that you can do what you say you can do as well as you say you can do it and it's uh, this is not the function of a few people telling you you know you can sing just to make you feel good Mm -hmm. you know it needs to come down to the science of it it needs to come down to measurements it needs to come down to averages it needs to come down to knowing that you actually can do what you say you can do Mm -hmm. and you you know, armed with that um, truth, you need to understand, you know, the value of what you can do in the market that you're about to operate in. Okay. You need to understand, your, yeah, so, uh, you know, the, the going rates for what it is you know how to do. In some cases, it can be a bit tricky because it's never really fixed. But, you know, an average will always help you. And then depending on how much work you put into what you can do. For instance, um, I charge a premium for what I do because I always give my best I don't know if it's the best out there, but I can tell you one thing for sure. It is always my best. And I Mm. think my best deserves a premium. So I charge a premium for what I do. Mm. So I think that's, you know, a good way to start to value your talent, knowing, you know, that you actually really can do what you say you can do and knowing the average of what you can do, you know, what it goes for in the current market that you're in. I think that's a good way to start to value your talent. Got it. Well, We have to take another break now and again, we'll give you the opportunity to make a music selection. What would it be this time? I think I'll pick one of our own. um, Uh I was um, expecting that. Yes, I I would (laughs) pick one of our own and uh, because, you know, I think, you know, it's it's great music. I'm I'm super excited about it and um, I'm excited to have been involved in the project. But more than that, I like to step back and listen and know that, you know, it's 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 great work and you know he's a great musician. So I would um pick you suppose nil by Bez. All right. Got it. Okay, we'll come back after this break and give you more perspective from Kobam Zazuko. Coming up on Mind Your Own Business. The things that you call limitations are not necessarily the real limitations. The real limitation is first and foremost your mind. You know, and I'm a living testament to that because mm-hmm. you know everything I am today is everything I had hoped I would become. Why do they ask me if I love you? After all of the things where I don't do. You suppose no by now Why they ask me if I miss you 
If you know they're by my side You didn't mean like say I wonder You suppose no by now Say now only you will get my heart Even though you no go talk I'm, I no say you they think I'm Welcome back to Mind Your Own Business, brought to you by UBA, Africa's Global Bank. We're speaking to Kobam Zasukwa, prolific songwriter and music producer. He is, of course, the CEO of Camp, Kobam Zasukwa Music Productions. And Kobam, we want to talk about turning talent into profit. And mm. I want us to step back from just making money here. Because, I mean, looking at what you do, you obviously are focused on making impact beyond profit. Mm. Um, can you just speak to that point as a talented person, you know, the impact that you can make in the world? Oftentimes, and I, for, for whatever reason, we, we miss this. Money is, um, is, is a byproduct, if you will. Mm. Um, what your talent is given to you for, what I think, you know, we're actually, we're really able to do with our talent is meet a need, is make a strong impact, is, um, is, is make a change. Mm-hmm. And I think that what happens as people connect with the change or the impact that you're able to create with your talent is, you know, you then get the reward, you know, in form of money and many other ways. I'm recognition sure. and so recognition forth. and so on and so forth. So I think, you know, the the thing you anyone should concentrate on is how to meet a need. Um, I think that some of the biggest businesses I know of, and I think even what drove me into, you know, drove me to music production is actually the desire to meet a need, to create a certain standard of um, of music, of production in the Nigerian space. Mm. And I'm happy to see that it's just, you know, in, in terms of the quality of production, it's, it's, it's moved and just progressed. Mm. Um, but it must always come from the desire to meet a need so you mm. hold a microphone because and you know politicians it's ironic how politicians know this more than you know even musicians so um they know that and 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 corporates who are able to sort of exploit the the following you know that artists have mm-hmm. um for you know brand ambassadorship purposes and all of that right. um you're able to say something that can cause you know an effect that can literally move through, you know, just the people who follow you and the people mm-hmm, who mm-hmm. understand your essence, you know, mm-hmm. and, and what you're about. I think that that should always be, you know, the focus of creating not just business, but, you know, music right. or exploiting your talent. It must always come from a place of wanting to meet a need. Right. And I always say that music is a big part of creating culture and forming that culture in our society. But I want you to speak to a point where which I think is quite important, mm. be going beyond limitations. Obviously, you are visually appeared and your success has, is obviously a big inspiration to many. Can you just speak to those who are sitting there and thinking about all the challenges they have, all the roadblocks that they have to go over to to be able to succeed? Uh, one of the first things I'll say to that is, um, you know, I've, I've heard it said many times and, you know, you can't say it too many times. You are what you think. If you think that you can, you know, go out and just do exploits and do big things, then that's exactly what you're going to do. Uh, I have a very interesting background. You know, I grew up in the military cantonment. I grew up in the barracks. Okay. Um, uh, I have friends who are not necessarily in the space or ilk that, you know, I desired as a child you know, that I, I wanted to find myself in and I wanted to operate in. Mm. And I realized that what was going to create or make that difference happen for me was my mind and, you know, just pr- my perception and mm. how I, how I view life mm. and how I value myself. Mm. And so, you know, I would say to anyone who is, um, struggling with, you know, the need to get up and do something that look, if you don't get up and do it, it won't happen. 
if you get up and do it, chances are it might happen or your thoughts are that it might not happen. If you don't do it, it won't happen anyway. So there's nothing to lose. Right. You how about trying it out and see if by chance it happens. Mm. And I think that if you believe, if your attitude is positive that it will happen, then it will happen, which is why I'm like, it's, it, you know, you are what you think. If you think that it is possible, then it is possible. And, you know, the, the things that you call limitations are not necessarily the real limitations. The real limitation is first and foremost, your mind, you know, and I'm a living testament to that because, mm -hmm. you know, everything I am today is everything I had hoped I would become. And the thing, you know, the, the, the things that I, I intend to do in the future, the things that I dream about right now. So my mind is pretty much my powerhouse where it happens from. So that's what I'd say. I'd say if you're thinking about it, now's the time to get up and go. You are what you think. Very strong statement there. And I want you to leave us with some more. Um, three tips for entrepreneurs. What would you say to people who are trying to make it in Nigeria? It's generally seen as a tough place to do business. Mm. But what would be the three valuable nuggets that you will leave with entrepreneurs? I would say one, get into a business or start a business because you want to meet a need. Mm. I think that that's very, very important. Start a business because you want to meet a need. Two, um, have the discipline to see it through. Mm. Um, it, it's it it can get frustrating no matter what kind of business it is you know that you're it it can get frustrating, but you need um the discipline to see it through. Three, I would say, set up the structures and processes to make your business outlive you. Mm. You, it's it's one thing from the start. From the start, it's one thing to know how to do it. It's another thing to realize that you won't always be there, you know, um, for it to be done or that you shouldn't always be there for it to be done. So from from mentoring and training to, you know, what whatever it takes, you know, just make sure that you're setting up, you know, your business from the start to outlive you. And I want to go back to to just a little bit, you know, about, you know, just building the the discipline to see it through. Sure. You know, processes are important. Um, just the legal side of business, um, how, for instance, if your interest is, you know, in business of music, mm -hmm. um, I've heard it said several times that um, music is a spiritual business, but the business of music is not necessarily spiritual. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of legal language in music. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes your involvement in music is not necessarily you know, just on the creative end, there's the administrative end, there's music business, you know, there's intellectual property law, um, mm -hmm. you know, there are, there are people who help to deal with, you know, just the paper of getting your work done. And yeah. sometimes that's where, you know, you might function best. I think it's important to identify, you know, where you function and, you know, just have the discipline to, you know, walk that path. Mm. Um, in business it's important to have the discipline to walk your path in business so yeah uh, I just wanted to touch on that but yes just to to sum it up I would say make sure that your business is designed to meet a need mm -hmm. um, make sure that you know you have the discipline to see it through build processes build structures thirdly I think it's build structures right yes build, <laughs> build structures and processes okay yeah all right well thank you thank you very much for your time it's been really valuable having you in the studios today we're speaking to Kobams Asuko and that's the end of our program for this week thank you so much for listening good morning for inquiries on mind your own business follow on twitter at myobiz nigeria and uba group facebook.com forward slash myob nigeria and facebook.com forward slash uba group instagram.com forward slash mind your own biz nigeria or email cfc at uba group.com you can also call uba cfc on 01280-8822 or 01631-9822 and 0700 2255 Today's business tips on Mind Your Own Business from music producer and songwriter Kubam Zasukor. Meeting a need for demand, discipline, and structure a process. That was Mind Your Own Business. Brought to you by UBA.